Uh, I, uh, okay, so who am I? Um, I am Ågot. I work in security incident response uh, in NAV. Uh, so I am the person that you call when everything turns to shit. Uh, it's also a really bad day as for you as a developer if my team calls and like, hey, <laughs> we are from cybersecurity. <coughs> Do you run this application? I saw that you were the last one to commit to GitHub. <laughs> uh, it's an amazing day for everyone. <coughs> I drink way too much coffee uh, and I am passionate at preventing burnout in the tech industry, which is ironic since I am the largest stress factor that could possibly <laughs> exist. Uh, and usually uh, you have a picture of yourself uh, here, like on the top of a mountain or something, but I usually stay indoors. Uh, I don't have cats, I don't have kids. Uh, so I put a picture of like um, the job I had when I realized that incident response is the most fun thing ever. And I uh, censored away all the things I am not allowed to, to show. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, this was the mood, like sitting around, waiting for uh, that phone, uh, one of all of many phones to ring. Uh, and uh, the, the, the old school phone, which is like down there, is if you're stuck in the elevator, <laughs> it would be me that would say, yes, hello, how can I help you? And you're like, oh my God, I'm stuck. And we're like, don't worry. <laughs> we will maybe come. Um, and there's like an EU regulation about how long people are legally allowed to be stuck in an elevator. <laughs> and that's 72 hours, so... <laughs> Don't worry, it will be fine. <coughs> I recommend this designated like, like one corner for sleeping and, you know... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why do I want to talk about documentation? <laughs> and what does that have to do with anything? Okay, uh, this is an actual screenshot from the NAV Confluence. It says, uh, it's like user insight. It's created by someone who has uh, quit. Uh, in 2021, you can be the first one to like this completely empty page. Uh, how many of you s uh, have a feeling inside your heart right now that you have uh, this situation <laughs> at least once in your Confluence? <laughs> Th there are way too many people, I'm gonna say. <laughs> Uh, because uh, why uh, does it matter? Uh, it's because uh, if this happens, oops, your files have been encrypted. This is the uh, WannaCry decryptor. So if you get the WannaCry ransomware, this is what's going to happen. And then uh, like maybe, maybe five minutes later, your phone is going to ring and it's going to be me. Uh, and if you you don't remember how you set up your application and you didn't put it in Confluence, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You're fucked, that's what you do. <laughs> okay, so another example from life. Uh, this is bad, what do you do? <laughs> like your actual house is on fire, then what do you do? I mean, run out, run out good first step, and then what? <laughs> Go to Nav, yeah, but uh, you know. Uh, so something that uh, usually is uh, in every uh, office and like official public building is this. It's an evacuation map. Because you all think that if you just look at this, you will be safe, right? <laughs> but I can tell you right now, this is, the this is the floor that my office is in. And I can't reach that far, I think. But they put a steel door to shut off half the floor. So if you are in like the bottom half and you need to escape to the upper half, there's a steel door that is not in this drawing. So when the fire department comes and they're like, oh, it's like an open access, we can go, oh no, there's a steel door, which is a problem, you know. <laughs> uh, so who are you going to call? Uh, these guys. Uh, but what do they do to prevent <coughs> burnout? <laughs> because they, they don't. They, th their actual job is to watch people die, for real, and they stay in the job. Why? Why do we, the largest stress moment in our job, is to maybe have downtime? 
for most of us, that's the worst that will happen. These people, if your house burns and they get a phone call that the hospital burns, they're going to say, OK, bye. And they leave your house and they rescue the people in the hospital. And your house and your things and potentially your life will be lost that day. And they don't quit. Why? Like, like really, why? So here are 70. Huh? Maybe meaning in their job also, but you know, I'm not going to trash talk management in case they are watching this stream. <laughs> 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 but here are seven things that they do that we, and uh, that includes me, needs to be doing. Okay. The first thing is to exercise. Because biologically, like your brain chemistry, when your stress rises, your ability to think goes down. Like that, if you don't think that applies to you, you've never been stressed in your life. <laughs> and come talk to me later and I will help you with that. You know, that's <laughs> uh, so the first thing that happens is that you lose your ability to have like oversight and overview of like your, the terrain, like your surroundings. And if you exercise, then you will know what to do because you fall back on what you've practiced. And if you don't practice, you fall back back on, I don't know, I don't even want to think about what you do if you get stressed and have not practiced. This is why we do first aid courses. This is why we do fire drills. And we should do the same. Like, what do you do if you think you have failover and you realize that you don't? When was the last time you checked that your secondary location site actually did catch if the first one fails. When did you shut off your server and check that it actually comes back up if something disastrous happens? If you didn't check, you don't know. If you didn't check your backups, you don't have backups. Okay, I'm really being kind of angry with you now, okay? <laughs> Okay, and then use your daily events to practice your skills. W if you have a small bug, what do you put in GitHub? Do you put fix the bug? Push. But I can guarantee you that the fire department, they don't have one single incoming phone call, which is closed by just a phone call. <laughs> they will document everything, who, what, where, when, they will do that. And if you start doing that, then when, you <laughs> when everything goes bad and you have to call someone to help you or someone calls you and like, huh, there is something in, in your code, then you can go back and see. And when your stress levels rise, you will fall back that you know how, at least you know how to document, okay? One thing you know how to document, you know? Okay, the third point, plan for 24-7. And I'm not saying you should have a 24-7 daily thing, but what do you do if the downtime starts at Friday at 2 o'clock? Then what do you do when you are still there on Friday evening at 11 in the evening? Like, what do you do? Who is going to order food? Like, who, who is ordering food? It's not me. I have my plans, so what are you doing, you know? Which budget is the food coming from? Who is paying for it? How do people get home? The last train left at nine, like how do you get home? Like what do you do? And someone needs to pick up your kids from daycare, you know, what do you do? And if you, do, if you don't have thought about this before everything goes to shit, then you don't have anything, you have nothing. You know, when me and my team calls you and you are still there at 11 in the evening and I say, OK, you need to actually go home. Someone needs to go home and you need to do the shift rotation right about now. Who goes home? Who stays? Now, the downtime isn't fixed, you know. Uh, Transport of London recently had a cyber attack and it was 16 days that they only spent in the initial containment phase. Are you going to stay at work for 16 days just to fix the first thing? I, 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 I'm not. I'm going home. <laughs> OK. Uh, when your stress levels rise, you forget how you configured Kubernetes. 
I can guarantee you that you will not be able to figure out the special little th trick that you had to do <laughs> to get the legacy system talking to the new fancy cloud thing. You don't know that. If you didn't, write it down with a, in a manual with easy steps. You are not able to do it when you're stressed. Okay, and assist the new hire to be s as, as self-sufficient as soon as possible. And this is connected to number four. Because if you hire a new one, it doesn't matter if they're junior or senior or a consultant or if it's me, you know, you th that's, yeah. They, if you have a manual that will tell you, like kind of detailed how to do things, then they will be able to start working earlier. Everyone has started a new job and the first week you just sit there and be like, I don't know. I mean, pretty much everyone has done that, but if they had like, this is how you set up, this is how you do stuff, this is how you get started. And also if something really bad happens and you have to call like a, a I don't know, some company to help you with your incident response. Uh, what does it cost to have like five consultants sitting there being like, I don't know, uh, just as a motivation for if you have a budget responsibility. <laughs> okay, cross-check that your map and the terrain actually is the same. Uh, because uh, the nice little thing that you wrote down about making the legacy system talk to the Kubernetes, that's like two and a half years ago since that stopped being relevant. Because now there's a new trick that replaces that trick, but it kind of uses components from there, but also from there, and it's like a you need to periodically check that your documentation actually fits your workflow. It doesn't, you can't only like, this is not uh, regex, it's not a uh, write once to read never. <laughs> it's actually write it many times and also check it many times. Okay, and this is one, the last, the biggest one for me to prevent burnout. And I have speed run this presentation so fast so you can go with lunch after this, I'm just gonna say. Uh, the way we do debrief in tech uh, is shit. Uh, there has been cases where uh, like uh, the cybersecurity or like the downtime, like the incident response people come in and are like, okay, so what happened? Oh yeah, that guy clicked a link but he doesn't work here anymore. Yeah, we fired that guy. It's like, okay, but I kind of need to talk to him. Yeah, he's not picking up the phone because he's angry that he got fired. It's like, yeah, well, maybe that's not the best way to do things. And it's uh, a lot of the time it's about, it can be about like assigning blame. And if you are in a team where you feel that if you do something wrong and if you push to prod and prod breaks, which can happen, um, and you are kind of worried, that you're gonna get yelled at for that, uh, just get a new job, uh, it's not, just don't. Uh, but we need to not only care for the people who broke it in the first place, because that will happen 100%, but we also need to care for the people that fixed it. Because if you come in and try to help someone, you can get very stressed, and it's so easy to like, go down a rabbit hole and think that, oh, it's actually the firewall configuration or like, oh, there's something about that. And you miss like a huge clue, you know, it's so easy. And then you can feel responsible for not seeing that thing because you got like focused because your stress levels, you know, what I have said many times, they are up. So you are unable to take in new information. And we also need to like actually go through what happened. And if, if no one has any documentation, if you didn't write anything on that commit message, if you didn't take some notes anywhere, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to retrace the steps, both how it happened and how we fixed it. So we need to like step up and actually care about each other. You know, hot take. Uh, <laughs> empathy, you should try. Uh, <laughs> But we need to actually help people and care for them and make like an environment where it's safe to fail. Because when I, when, when you call and I uh, come down to your team to help you, I'm gonna be a little bit like, okay, let's fix it like, like I am now. But it's <laughs> also a kind of a, 
we need to actually care for each other and be like, no, that's okay, it's okay that you don't know. That's like the thing that I do the most. I know exactly what happened, I have seen it, I know. But it's like, oh, what do you think happened? <laughs> it ha it's like every time I call someone <laughs> and it's like, so yesterday at like two, did you click something? <laughs> I know, uh, they clicked something. Uh, <laughs> Every time they're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you were like on the internet, maybe checking some emails or so. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, did you click? And they're like, no. And I'm like, that's okay if you don't know. That's what I say the most, but yeah. <laughs> I try to be nice. <laughs> uh, because we need to not harass people when they do something bad. A little bit of harassment now that you're here is fine, but like, uh, if you do something bad, then I will not harass you. <laughs> Okay, I have time for one question, uh, because I decide we have, and uh, none of you, I am here later. Thank you for listening. You definitely earned that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.